let's see how we can quickly add some validation to our API posts using the validation framework. Okay, we have our basic APIs up and running here, and we can post some new content to it. And if I go through and create a new user, that all gets used, and all the fun stuff I want to create. But what happens if I don't put something in one of the fields? Let's say I leave email out. Well, it just goes through and sets email as null. Not what I want. So there's a validation framework that I can quickly go in and add. And let's go through and make sure we can get that up and running. The validation framework is from a spring starter, so a spring starter validation. We can go into the palm file and very quickly add this. So into our palm once again. And since this is a spring starter, I'll add it up at the top by the other spring starters. And as I said before, since it's a spring starter, we do not have to have a version of this because it's attached to the version of spring. In this case, it's spring 2.7.10. Okay, so I'm going to right click on the palm in IntelliJ, go to Maven, reload project, and that will bring in the updated spring boot starter validation uh, library that I need. Okay, so that's now in here. And on our REST controller, we have a post for the create that we're looking at right now. And on that, we send in a request body object called a new user DTO. So let's go look at new user DTO. Right now, we have no validation annotations whatsoever, for, for example, for email. Well, we can actually do a couple things. So on the post, we need to tell it that this needs to be validated. And we do that by adding the at valid annotation. Then once we do that, it should process any validations for that object when we post something. So let's go through and let's add a validation on here. And my first validation, I'm going to add for the email. I'm going to say not null. And maybe I want to add another one to say not blank. And we'll have the same message. So this will help us out a little bit. And let's go through and let's run this and see if this does anything whatsoever to help us. Start up the application. And once again, we're going to fire it without an email. Now we get back a bad request. We get back a 400. We don't know why, but we get back a 400. As we added the valid in here, I'm also going to add it into our DTO. I'm just going to say at valid. Okay, that'll make sure everyone understands that this needs to be validated. Now, we're getting back a 400 error, which is great, but we don't know why we're getting that back. Okay, and one more thing we need to do is on our REST controller, I'm going to go to the bottom and add this. I'm going to add in a response status for a bad request, so that's our 400, and an exception handler for method argument not valid exception. And what this is going to do is this exception handler is going to get all the exceptions. It's going to create a new map of string and string. It's going to iterate through with a for each all the errors. It's going to get the field name, the message, and put them in this map and then return it. So let's see what this does when we run it. Again, we put this in the REST controller. 
Now let's run this without the email. Now we see here, email is mandatory. Excellent. What if we take out the first name as well? No error. Well, on the first name, we have no validation in here. So let's add for that. Probably for the last name and probably for the password. So let's clean up the password. Clean up the last name. Clean up the first name. And let's go through now and see if we now catch our first name validation in here. So we're getting back a 400 and we're getting back both fields are required. That's great. So let's go through and let's put back our first name. Let's verify this. Now we'll see if that email is missing. So let's go through and put our email in. So now we can see this is working, but let's say our password is A. Kind of a short password. And maybe our last name is Z. Kind of a short password last name as well. So we can add additional validations in here, for example, for password, and I can add a size in here. And let's say I want the password to be the size minimum of five. The maximum of 20 and I want to give a message password must be between 5 and 20 cars oops no semicolon here there we go password must be between 5 and 20 cars. And let's spell it out. Characters. It's an API. And last name. Well, let's do the same with that too. The last name, uh, maybe it needs to be between 2 and 200. We want to clean this up and we don't say last base name. We want to make it a little more user friendly. Nope, not going to do that because that is the field name. So, okay, and we'll say, and this needs between two and 200. Okay, so let's, let's give this a shot and let's see what happens when we try to create this user. Last name must be between Two and 200 characters. Password must be between 5 and 20 characters. If we change our password to 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, then we see the last name is too short. We fix the last name. Okay, so now you've seen how we can do some annotations in the bean. So this is just a, a DTO. I'm using Lombok at data so you don't have to write getters and setters we can define what's null what's blank the size uh, the several other options we can add in there but in general the size we can set for min and max with a message so this will quickly allow you to go through and help define some of your apis we're going to also add this in to our update So we're adding in the valid. So 
since it's the same payload, we're just going to actually copy the same payload. Okay, so in the update, we can change the email, first name, and last name, but not the password. Now, if we go through and we try to do our update again, let's just grab this ID since we know it exists in the database. And we do our update, our put with this ID. We can go through and update it. And that works fine. But if we go through, same situation, and we leave email out, Let's see there's no errors because in the code for the rest controller for the update the put right here I have to add at valid now with at valid in there let's run this again and with the email missing I now get the email validation message. There you go. Some Spring Boot validation. This is really nice for the APIs. You don't have to write a bunch of if statements. This will help you build some code faster and more reliable. Hope you enjoyed this video.